Hey, welcome back to Build Something Cool. Today I've got a great video for you. It's gonna have cast iron repair, bolt extraction, painting, welding, it's gonna cover a lot of great stuff. If metalworking is your thing and you wanna expand your knowledge about working with all this machinery and different types of metal, this channel's for you. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also click the bell so you get your notifications of the next video. What's coming out on the pallet right now is a K.R. Wilson hydraulic press. I know it doesn't look like much. I picked it up when I was heading down to the Barzi Summer Bash this year. And uh, well, to get in the truck, I had to take it all apart. So instead of putting it back together again, I kept it in pieces, kept it on the pallet. But today we are going to completely rebuild it. In 1940, Frank Wilson was granted a patent for this hydraulic press. It actually incorporated three different things. It incorporated the frame, the head, and also the hydraulic pump itself. It came in four sizes, 25 ton, 50 ton, 60, 75, and 100. This one here is a 60 ton. This is a total cheat. I'm using an abrasive planer on this. Big, big time saver. Here's a hydraulic head, very unique design, and it has a rack and pinion gear system on it to raise and lower the head and also use it more as an arbor press. As an arbor press, it has a three ton capacity. It has a five inch bore. It'll handle, like I said, up to 60 tons. Okay guys, I know some of you are gonna freak out right now as I'm standing on this, which you would think is a chrome rod. It's actually not. There is no seals on this rod, but it does have a gear rack. Okay, right here we're looking at the broken casting. Now if we look at it a little bit closer, we'll actually notice that the casting was not broken by the rotary action of this gear. It's actually broken probably because the retaining screw got loose, bound up, and then snapped the casting. Here we are, we're gonna fit in a new part. I only have a piece of steel laying around, so we're gonna to have to use that. I did make a big mistake here, which you're gonna see shortly. I grabbed some welding rod, um, not brazing rod. Thought it worked, it didn't. Here I am using the Fireball Square shimmed kit. It's magnetic, not using it the right way, but it did hold this piece just like I needed it. I want to give a shout out to Osborne Abrasive for supporting the channel and sending me out all the grinding discs that I used on this rebuild. This is an adapter that is a R8 on one end and then takes number three Morris taper. Right here we're dropping in a drill bushing. It probably took me about 15 minutes to make it. 
and we're going to end up using it twice on this video, you'll see. Okay, we have a failure in the weld. What happened here is I tried to weld it instead of braze it. As you can see, it didn't hold up very well. I'm going to add some insurance to make sure this part holds in place. I'm going to add two quarter inch bolts in the X and Y axis. I think that'll do the trick. No measurements needed here. I'm just eyeballing it. It should be good enough. It's actually, I'm adding some insurance here by putting these bolts in. I could actually do it all with just the bolts, but I decided I would braze it in addition. I have a question. How many of you know why there's paint on this drill bit? Well, it's to segregate it from the rest of my drill bits. This is a size 7, and that's the exact size you need for a quarter 20 tap. We're going to groove this out to make some room for the brazing. Okay, this time we're actually going to braze it instead of try to weld it. The wind speed lock vise sure is a big advantage right here. Look how easy it is to change out these jaws. I only use this angle plate on Sundays because it's holy. Here we are back in with the drill bushing. We're going to use a ream. I didn't quite get this lined up well enough, but the ream makes quick action of it.
As you can see, there's still a little bit of pitting inside the cylinder. I hope I honed it enough. We'll actually know if it leaks. Well, I know I have to do a little bit more work. Here I'm going in with a bore gauge, find out I'm about five thousandths off on the bore, but I think it'll be fine. Here we're going to do some bolt extraction. One thing I like to do is tap it first. That's actually not to center it up, but that's actually just to break the rust free a little bit. This is a left-handed drill bit. It's actually a cheap one from Harbor Freight, but as you'll see, it works. Second bolt fought me a little bit. I actually went in with a smaller bit, drilled all the way through, came in with a larger one, pops right out. Now the trick to painting is really, it's not about painting, it's all about sanding. If you want a great finish, learn how to sand. I'll coat this three different times. This first one, I would like to actually do everything, paint it, then assemble it, and then continue on the painting. I didn't do that because of time. Here we're cutting off uh, some steel pipe. This is to replace the ones we cut out. I always need a good ground. This is going to become the new base. Just remove the hydraulic system. This actually came with a Hossfeld bender and we'll go back with the Hossfeld bender. It won't go on this press. I know you guys are seeing this lift quite a bit. You can see what a great advantage of having a lift like this is. I always get to work at standing height. It's such a great lift, I actually just bought another one that goes up to over 10 feet. reason for using the aluminum squares from Fireball. They're just a little bit lighter, easier to maneuver. But my go-to are the big cast iron. Here we're setting in the casters. These are my favorite casters. I, I always put six casters on everything because it's a guarantee if you're going to have a caster blow out and you're only using four, it's going to be one on the corner. <laughs> the advantage of six casters is it does spread the weight evenly. If you go over a crack in the, in the concrete, it goes over it a lot easier. They're not as great on rougher pavement. But because of their height, I can slip in a pallet jack and move it around a lot smoother and a lot easier. These parts are heavy, guys. 
That, those top braces are probably about 150 pounds a piece. That head, just the way it sits, is about 100, 125 pounds. What was interesting is there's a, a U-shaped beam right there in the center. That was actually from the factory and they cut it short about an inch. Here we are assembling the head. My first assembly was wrong. Had to redo it twice, but only twice. See that little appendage right there? If you look on the patent, if that's a special release, if the head comes down too far, it actually sets that valve off and relieves the pressure. We're going to line up the pinion gear right now. Wasn't too tricky. The tolerances aren't, aren't that tight, but I did make sure I did make sure the shaft was parallel to the rest of the frame. Back to sanding, quality finish. All starts with quality sanding. Also the advantage you'll find out with sanding it is you find where your paint is weak so if it chipped off you know you missed something. I know, I know. Where's my respirator? Sometimes you just forget guys. This is the conclusion to part one. Part two we're going to do all the hydraulics. now. This did not come with any of the hydraulics except for the head. I have to come up with what I have laying around to make this work. It's gonna make for a very, very exciting video. Also in October, the end of October, the Good of the Land Fest is gonna be again in Texas. Down below is a link. Check it out, you're gonna love it. A lot of great YouTubers are gonna be there. It's at a new location where it is an incredible, I wanna call it a steam park, not steampunk, steam park where they have live steam engines, tractors, all sorts of great things at the facility. We're gonna have blacksmithing going on. Very excited, I was invited back to be the MC. So join us in Texas. Again, down below is a link for the Good Old Land Fest. Thanks for watching, and until next time, grind your shop, build something cool. Thanks.